everyone, it's Taylorverse, and welcome back to Eichmann Revolution. And I have tapped, damn you! Okay, it it's loading quickly. Sweet. Load even quicker. Even fucking quicker. As fast as you fucking can is what is preferable. So, oh. Oh. Um, so we get some rose thing. Or is that that it's been okay? It's a gotcha coin, and the rose just represents that we've gotten it. Cool. Learning together. What's it? What? Okay, why the fuck not? I guess we'll do that. Oh, fuck me. You don't know what gotcha is? I think you'd better read this guide to find out. Get rare cards and attire only available and gotcha. You can use magic crystals or gotcha coins. Do a ten minute or a ten time multi pack from gotcha to get a four star card or higher. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So we'll do that since it's the gotcha coin. Oh, what the fuck? Okay. J just tell me what the fuck it is. What? Kiss at midnight result. Oh. Uh, okay. And then we have to claim it? Okay. Okay. Items. Okay. Oh, missions. Oh, what the fuck? Okay. So we gotta claim this now. You know what the fuck? Oh my god. Ew. Pretty hair. Honey colored wavy hair. 
Okay. How do you put that on? I guess it's... Maybe it doesn't tell you how. Hmm. Profile? Maybe. Oh, fuck. Oh. Um. Uh. Okay, so register your birthday to get a surprise on that day. You cannot change your birthday later. Your birthday will not be made public to other players. Okay, cool. I'm making it fucking public to everyone, though. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Okay, cool. I think that was all we could do. Oh my fuck! What does it want from me? What? If you get this gift, you can receive crystals every day. Fuck off! F fuck off! Fuck off! What have I done now? Oh, uh, motherfuck. Oh! Romantic and dramatic elixir. Okay. Oh, fuck me. What What have we done? What? what, what nothing? Nothing? Is that just always fucking there? Oh, fuck it! Fuck it! Okay. Now, back to the damn story. Ray let go of my chin at last, even as I tried to wonder what he might mean by having high hopes for me. Still, if you need my help for anything, just call. In a loud voice, if you can. A loud voice? What, do you want me to scream at the top of my lungs? Well, if I can't hear you, I can't help you. Ray gave me a surprisingly winning grin before turning and walking away. You are so not what I thought you were. I could still remember the warmth of his arms when he caught me falling out of the sky. And when I'd found out he was the king and he'd offered to make me a deal, well, make a deal with me, I thought he was kind and reliable. But you're more aloof than I expected, and I can't read you at all. And you seem like a bit of a troublemaker, although I'm not sure if you're teasing me, or if you maybe just don't like me. Ray turned away from Taylor and stepped out into the corridor. Hey, you're Ray. Fenrir was leaning against the wall near the door his eyes dancing with amusement. You're so underhanded, my friend. What are you talking about? 
I'm talking about the deal you made with Taylor. <laughs> what was it you said? Your ability to f deflect magic is just what we need? Yeah, that was it. Why do you even say it? You know it's not like that at all. What is it you really want to say? Fenrir held up one finger, waving it at Ray. Reason number one for why you said it was just a deal. You wanted to protect Taylor from those annoying as heck red guys. And then reason number two, Fenrir held up a second finger, his bright eyes never leaving Ray's. You wanted to create an excuse for Taylor to come stay with us without feeling like she was imposing. Well, this is all just me making some educated guesses, of course. Do me a favor, then. Stop making guesses. Oh, you're so scary, your majesty. Fenrir gave an exaggerated shrug as he turned and walked calmly away. Oh, hey, wait. I forgot to say one more thing. Hmm? I hate loading. It sucks, Dick. Our king is plenty strong enough without Taylor's ability. And that ain't a guess. That's the truth. Fenrir grinned over his shoulder, and at last Ray grinned back at him. I'll accept that last one, but only that. Gotcha. Fenrir's voice was cheerful as he turned away, one hand wa raised in a casual wave. Ray glanced over at the window, where the sky was still bl bright blue. Oh, that's pretty. Until the next full moon, huh? We're only together for thirty days. That's all. Ew! The sun slowly began to set over Cradle, and the first few stars began to appear in the sky. How did this happen? Ray and Fenrir had come to tell me it was the time for the celebration party. But apparently just attending the party wasn't enough. They insisted on putting a blindfold on me. Now everything was dark, and I was forced to rely on them to lead me to the party. Come on, you two. Why'd you have to blindfold me? Because it's way more fun to yell one, two, three, and let you see everything all at once, right? But you'd better be careful, Taylor. About what? Cradle is a treasure trove of weird and wonderful food. For real? For real. Don't go passing out in complete shock when we take the blindfold off. After all, women are strong when they make up their minds, right? What are you even babbling about? It's a secret. With my eyes covered, I had to rely on my hearing even more, and I could clearly hear the teasing tone in Ray's voice. I was wrong. You're not just a bit of a troublemaker. You're a real troublemaker. I opened my mouth, all ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly... I heard the sound of a door opening, and the aroma that wafted out was so tantalizing, it distracted me completely. Well, then... Let's see what you think. Damn loading. Ray casually pulled the blindfold away from my eyes. Wow. My gaze was immediately caught by the huge dining table, covered in an array of delicious-looking dishes. This is amazing. Where did you get roast beef like that, and fish and chips, and that potato salad? I can hardly believe this. Tee <laughs> That's because we have our own little chef, and he's very skilled. You have a chef? In the army? Indeed, his name is Luca Clements. You didn't have to call me little. 
Wait, Luca, you made all of this? I just like to cook. Besides, everyone helped. Our soldiers generally tend to eat what they like, when they like. But we usually end up relying on Luca here. I'm already making my own share, so... In spite of Luca's gruff words, a faint, somewhat shy smile played around his lips. Thank you. Eat. It'll get cold. Okay. That's our cue. Everyone dig in. Oh man, this is so good. And you really did serve beef. Just like I asked. Luca, you're the best. Shut up and eat, Fenrir. Also, that's Sirius's beef you're eating. I am? Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Hang on. I noticed suddenly that Seth was holding his fork in the air. His eyes shut. I frowned a little, wondering what was wrong, and leaned over to say something when... Ah, uh, it's so important to have a fresh face like yours around. I'm sorry? Look how good our food is. Look how cheerful everyone is. This is... This just goes to show how amazing you are, Alice. And look at all this wine and ale. I'm gonna drink myself into a stupor tonight. I'm not carrying you back to your room, Seth. It's pathetic having to carry some poor drunken oaf around while he sings off-key and drools on my shirt. Oaf? I'm a perfect gentleman, thank you very much. And I can carry a tune just fine, and I still ain't carrying a perfect gentleman anywhere. Fenrir? Seth, Fenrir, please. Leave it. They're always like that. You've got more important things to worry about. Come on, look this way for a sec. Huh? What for? Because, uh... Forget it. Ray was studying me, his chin resting on his hand, and I frowned at him in confusion. A moment later, he reached out, gently touching the corner of my lips, and I jumped. You had sauce smeared on you. I stared at him as he licked the sauce from his finger, his expression brightening. That's really good. Which sauce was it? Um, oh, right, that one there. Thanks. He turned away to serve himself more food, and I breathed a sigh of relief that he hadn't noticed my sudden blush. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs>